What's up guys? Uh, another Bible study, Bible reading, Philippians 2. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, United in spirit, intent on one purpose. And that's how we need to be as the body of Christ, as believers. We need to be standing together, like I mentioned in the last video, and being the light of the world. Jesus is coming back soon. We need to let his light shine through us. So we're gonna be so we can be an example of him and draw people to him the only way we're gonna draw people to him is by doing his works walking in his ways standing out do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit but with humility of mind Regard one another as more important than yourselves. I mean, this life, I mean, we can't look at ourselves as, as important at all, or our lives. This life is just a breath compared to eternity. Here today, going tomorrow, and any one of us could be going tomorrow. And we're nothing without Christ. We need to regard others like like he says right here. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind. We need to be humble. Regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. We need to be loving, caring, caring about other people. Like I don't, I don't care about this life. I don't care about what I'm gaining. Because nothing in this life matters other than serving God and living for Him, being a light and helping others, bringing others to Him. And nothing, no, nothing matters in this life. I don't, I don't care about, and I'm not saying I'm perfect or I'm a perfect example, but I don't care about things I have or don't have. I mean, I'm, I'm living. And I'm living for him, and that's what, that's what we need to do. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. By looking out for others, not worrying so much about ourselves, but serving others. Who, although he existed in the form of God, Speaking about before he came to earth. Did not regard equality with God. Speaking of the Father. A thing to be grasped. He didn't consider himself equal with the Father. But he existed in the form of God. He is God. But not the Father. But emptied himself. And, th and this is how I know. That. That was speaking about. Before he. Came here. To this earth. He existed in the form of God. Did not. Quart regard equality with God. As a thing to be grasped. But emptied himself. Taking on the form of a bond servant. And being made in the likeness of men. 
Jesus said he came to serve. He washed his, this is God in the flesh, and he washed his disciples' feet. One of the most humble things you can do. He made in the likeness of man. He came in a flesh like ours. God came and put on flesh, and suffered, and died for us. We need to be grateful and live for Him. Being found in appearance as a man, appearance, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, obedient to the Father. And, and if we're not obedient to God, I mean, are we really His? We need to be living for Him. Even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted Him. The Father highly, ex highly exalted Him and bestowed on Him the name which is above every name. So with the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, every knee will bow. Those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and Sheol. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Yeshua HaMashiach is Lord, is Master, to the glory of God the Father. See, that's what the Father wants. He wants us to confess and admit that Jesus Christ, that His Son, His Master, is, is Lord, is God. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now about that, there's too many people that just teach. I mean, I guess the basics of the gospel, but just teach, believe, and you'll be saved. Believe, and you're, you're going to make it into heaven. That's all you have to do. No works. No works, but believe. A lot of people preaching that sugar-coated sugar gospel. But this says, work out your salvation, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your walk with God with fear and trembling. Too many people don't do that, too many people don't preach that. For it is God who is at work in you. The Spirit of God. That just made me contemplate right there. Is that is that line calling the Holy Spirit God? Because it's the Holy Spirit that's at work in us. Of course, it's God working working in us. But for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Oh man. Uh, this is just back. To, I'm not trying to talk too much through this chapter. I'm trying to get. I got to get through this chapter, but so many people out there teaching. N not not works. You're saved by faith, by grace through faith. Not not of works. Not of yourselves. Not not that any man can 
So no man can boast. I'm making a point that it's not works. I agree, we're not saved by our works. But for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. <laughs> People skip out on a, on a lot of scriptures. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. So that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent. Children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that in the day of Christ day of his return, the resurrection, which is coming very soon. So that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory, because I did not run in vain or toil in vain, because he's going to see them in the sky, and he's going to he'll have reason to glory if they make that resurrection, that first resurrection. Let me read that part again. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. We need to serve God the way we need to serve God. Because we want to without grumbling or disputing. And all things without grumbling or disputing. So that you will pr prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent. So many times in the Bible that tell... So many places that tell us to be blameless, to walk like that, to walk out that our faith blameless, but not enough of that is being taught nowadays. People think they can live whatever type of lifestyles, and as long as they believe in Jesus, they're all right. But that's not the case. That's not true. Blameless, and so that you will prove yourself to be yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach above reproach so people can't talk down on you prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent so people can't call you a hypocrite children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation we're definitely living in a crooked and perverse generation right now. Among whom you appear as lights in the world. We need to be the light of the world. We need to stand together as one body. Stand against the evil and be the light of the world. Showing others what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a follower of Yeshua. Holding fast to the word of life, the scriptures, Yeshua, Jesus. So that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory, because I did not run in vain, nor toil in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice. And share my joy with you all. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will be genuinely concerned of your welfare. For they all seek after their own interests, not for those of Christ Jesus. It's like in the last chapter, there's a lot of people out there preaching the gospel for their own good, for their own for money, for the look of things, notoriety, but not for Jesus, not for the truth. 
not for the people they're trying to reach. And I don't get it. It's sad. But you know of his proven worth, speaking of Timothy, that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel, like a child serving his father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately. As soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust in the Lord that I myself will be coming to you shortly. But I thought it necessary to send, send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need. Basically going back between them and, and him. Because he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick to the point of death. But God had mercy on him. And not only him, but also on me. That I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I have sent him all the more eagerly. So that when you see him again. You may rejoice, and I may be less concerned about you. Receive him, receive him then in the Lord with all joy, and hold men like him in high regard, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. Risking his life to help out Paul where, where they fell short on helping him out. But that's the end of Philippians 2. And God bless you guys.